Hey everyone, right now there's a giant fucking snowstorm outside of my house. I have nothing else to do, so I thought it'd be a lot of fun to talk about the characterization in Vox Machina and how the show does it so damn well. It actually does it within like two or three minutes of the characters being introduced in the bar scene. So I want to talk about the bar scene specifically because there's actually a lot to talk about in this one two to three minute clip. But first, if you guys want to see more stuff of what I talk about writing, character writing, all that stuff, let me know by hitting the like button, sharing, commenting, all that. So just let me know. Because I do like talking about writing personally. I do it a lot on TikTok, but I want to talk about more writing over on YouTube if I can. If you guys like that, let me know. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, the scene starts with everyone chugging, drinking, you know, as you do in a bar. But the thing is, if you pay attention, Percy's actually in the background just sipping wine, kind of far from everyone else. As established later on, Percy's a little bit embarrassed to be seen with his group of friends. He's also a lot more refined. He's drinking wine. That lets you know he's a little more of an aristocrat. He doesn't really, like, chug beers and bars and then you actually see that grog finishes drinking first he's immediately happy and he starts cheering how the best he is this actually establishes grog's whole like wanting to be the best and always being very competitive if you actually pay attention to the entire show there's constantly like scenes where he's competitive with people uh when he loses to the dragon he talks about how he doesn't like losing Every, he's very competitive with Vax. It's a thing that's very consistent with this character. He's very competitive with his friends and uh, always wants to win. If you really look closely in this scene, you actually notice that Pike might have actually beat him in a drinking contest, but she doesn't say anything about it. She's just smiling at him because you don't see her drinking after he puts the mug down. So it could be implied that she actually beat him, but she doesn't want to ruin the moment for him. Which is actually very sweet and consistent with her character, actually. Who's drunk? Not me. I'm great. I have another... <laughs> and Kiki essentially like acting like she's not drunk. She's trying to keep up with everyone, trying to like be cool like them. And she only had one ale and she's already vomiting. Kiki's kind of a mess when it comes to self-confidence in the show. And her trying to like act like she's okay is actually very funny to me. Because <laughs> she's clearly not. Pike, obviously being one of the more kinder people in the group, immediately tries to comfort her and help her out while she's vomiting. Watch it, bitch. Hey! You watch it, dick nose. And Grog yelling back at the guy who pushed Ketolith actually is very consistent with his character as well. Grog is very protective in his own way in the show. And he's always willing to stand up for his friends or fight and defend his friends immediately. He's very, very protective. Even though he doesn't always kind of show it. Easy, Grog. We don't waste our time on talking assholes, remember? And Pike, obviously, being a holy person, but still willing to shit talk as much as everyone else. And I love that about her character as well. This establishes that she is, while kind, still foul mouthed as fuck. Oi, tavern keep. Another round for Vox Machina. Anyway, if you pay attention while Vex is actually calling for more beers, Grog is still staring at that orc. <laughs> He's still really pissed off. Vox Machina. What a fucking joke. <laughs> Let's keep things civil, friend. And when the orcs start talking more shit, Vex goes up to him and is polite and says, let's keep everything civil, but he still has a knife in his hand. To say, essentially threatening the group of people by saying, be nice or I'll stab you, essentially. It's, a, it's like a subtle threat. You wait to tickle your own pickle. Are you offering to help? The, the show then establishes that Vax is bisexual by flirting with the annoying orc. And Vax getting all flirty, put the orc's guard down. Which, since Grog was paying attention and watching that orc the entire time, he was waiting for his chance to cut off his fucking hand. And through the entire show, Vax and Grog have a very fun rivalry between each other. So they're always bouncing off each other throughout the entire show. So this is establishing both of them like being very close with each other. And just, like, knowing when to act when the other one is talking to someone. Like, v Vax didn't even need to tell Grog to do anything. He just knew he was gonna do that. And he immediately just cut the guy's arm off. Like, it's, it's very well establishing that they can understand each other without even talking, essentially. I actually like this little shot because you see everyone getting ready to fight. But Percy's still in the background with his face in his hand, just not wanting to fight. And being embarrassed to be seen with everyone. Even when they lunge at each other, Percy's still in the background. With his face in his hand. <laughs> Being an opportunistic rogue thief, Vax immediately steals a beer. Establishing his love of stealing shit. Percy is still just trying to avoid the fight as much as possible. Until the fight comes to him. A cup flies out the window. He just dodges it like it's nothing. Because he's like, whatever. And then he dodges a sword from a orc lady twice. He then pulls the pepper box on her. And the funniest thing about this scene that I really like is that nobody in universe really knows what the pepper box is. Except for Percy. 
and well, the orc doesn't even know what it is at all. He just looks at it like questioningly, and then immediately tries to cut Percy in half immediately after. This is actually establishing a couple things. One, Percy has got confidence. He is smug, and people in universe do not know what the pepper box is at all. They sh that lady should be terrified of having that thing point at her face, but she didn't realize it. And then Grog, again, reestablishing that he is very protective of people in his group, immediately tries to jump to help Percy. And as Grog does, he kind of fucked it up a little bit by crushing poor Percy under the orc. And then this dog thing just smacks Grog in the back of the head with a chair and does literally nothing. Establishing that Grog is tough as fuck. With Grog crushing Percy and Vex tripping over Pike, this is essentially establishing that the team is still kind of a mess. Vax as the rogue, again, stealing even more, being opportunistic as fuck, and stealing from some random people in the bar for no fucking reason, throwing it to his sister who immediately catches it and continues to fighting. She even keeps a smug look while she's getting threatened by an orc with a broken bottle. <laughs> this is establishing that they've done this quite a lot. <laughs> Kiki being Kiki, basically a kind of a mess of a person, gets yelled at by a dog and then, gets, and then vomits in the dog's mouth. <laughs> God, it's so gross. But then he establishes how strong she actually is by covering the dog in vines and ending the fight immediately, faster than anyone else in the group. And this, this seems literally just to establish that Vex has a bear pet. That's essentially what it is. Uh, and she's willing to feed him pretty much anything, like a female orc, for example. Uh, also, I will say that I think the bear should be in the show a lot more because that bear is adorable as fuck. Again, reestablishing that the team is still kind of a mess. Grog gets in the way of Percy's shot, letting you know that they still have a lot to work on when it comes to teamwork. And Stantlin is being Stantlin, basically being a stereotypical bard and laying some fucking pipe. <laughs> Percy, the hell, man? If you want to join in, you gotta ask first. With, with that line, Stalin essentially establishes that he is not only just a bard, he's a super kinky bard. He told Percy essentially, like, hey, if you, you could have joined if you asked. So he's, he's letting you know he's extra kinky. <laughs> After the barkeep, he starts yelling at everyone in the bar to stop fighting. Vexalia tries to charm them into calming down, essentially. Uh, it doesn't work. But this will establish that Vexali is kind of the pseudo leader of the group. She's willing to talk to the other person in charge to try to calm them down. The barkeep tries to get Vexali to pay for the damages for the bar. Vexali then immediately says that she does not have the money right now. But if you give her time, she'll be able to pay for it eventually. While trying to hand the last of her money to her brother in secret. Establishing that, well, she's full of shit. Vex and Vax are both very, very opportunistic and are also very good at understanding each other without dialogue as well. <laughs> she just gestures her hands behind her back and her brother immediately grabs the bag of money and hides it. This is letting you know that they are very, very, very close. So they fit all of that characterization in two or three minutes of footage. That's insane. Anyway, uh, that's, that's it. That's my video. I just wanted to see if I could actually do something like this. I want to see how well it does on YouTube. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I, I kind of want to do more writing stuff like this on YouTube, but I want to make sure that I actually have a you know audience for this. So yeah, let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys later. Bye.